Hello, this is Daniel and welcome to the fourth part of the character rigging tutorial. Here we have again our character model and our rig so far that looks very good and works very smooth except for a couple of very small issues that we will skip for now. But the big, the big feature that probably all of you are interested in and which was the most difficult to come up with is the hair physics. And this is what we're going to cover today. And to explain to you how it works, I've prepared a physics demonstration scene where I set up the whole system and I'll try to explain as good as I can. So this is what the result looks like and it has some huge advantages over other simulation types like clothes simulation or <clears throat> you name it. The good thing about it is how stable it is you really get a great, really great control over, um, you know, animation wise, and you will never have to, um, you know, change the animation because the simulation doesn't work, simply because it's just rigid bodies colliding with each other. And even the rotation, if you set it up correctly, you never get issues with the direction. All the hair strands will try to uh, face the right direction and it just works. So how does it work? Um, this is the final result more or less, but wh when you animate it, you want to have it in a way where you can just, you know, pose everything and then start the timeline and it just drops the way it is. So that actually works. Let me unhide all the layers and we have here a control armature system. So if I select these, I can just, you know, pose them in a new way. And once I play the animation again from the start, this will just drop in the new pose that I that I posted in. Uh, so this works through a couple of systems. First of all, we have a control control rig, which is what our current rig is going to be. We have a couple of controller bones back here. Um, where these objects are parented to, so the cube, the collider object basically, and the empty, which is, you know, the position of the, the joint that we're going to create, uh, are, you know, just parented to the bone, so that it works. The good thing about the simulation in Blender is that as soon as it starts, you cannot, you know, manipulate it anymore, which means that we pose it at the beginning, and once the simulation starts, it's free to move. Now, apart from, you know, the, the posing system, we need to get uh, the transformation again back to an armature system so that we can apply it to our character in the end. Which means that inside we have a new, a second armature system here, which could be, you know, in the same rig, but I just separated it in two objects so that it's more obvious. This one has a couple of um, constraints to them where it just follows the position, the first one holds the position, and then you just copy the rotation for all the bone, uh, for all the collider objects, and that makes it work. So as for the rigid body setup, we have here two passive rigid body bodies that have animated, checked, uh, of course, with their appropriate collider types, and um, as for these cubes, we also have just normal active rigid bodies with the box collider you could add you know friction settings and stuff y yeah one important thing that I want to mention is that um, I have very high amount of uh, damping in both transition and rotation because hair really doesn't move that much you know it's very it very quickly stops to move you don't want to overdo the effect of hair dynamics and well, now, that, now that I'm talking about settings I also want to mention that here I have the speed set to 5 because um, it doesn't look correct for some reason. Uh, you know, I might have other settings wrong, like mass and things like that. I'm not too sure about that, but um, if you know better, please fix that. But I just use a speed value of 5 because that, this gives me a very uh, good speed, something that looks realistic. I also use 60 frames per second here to give me a much smoother result with 24 frames per second. Again, it's um, 
slower somehow and it just it's well just compare it to the 60 frames per second it will be a huge difference you will see um, when rendering it you can still you know uh, set the frame steps differently or something but um, I like to work with it this way for how fluent it is and how stable the simulation is uh, okay, back to what I was actually talking about. We have here the rigid bodies, and I forgot. Um, I haven't mentioned one more component of the system, which is the empties here. These are the the rigid body constraints, which connect uh, the first collider with the first active rigid body, and then connect the chain and so on. And these are generic types with um, limits, so we don't want them to move around, and we want to limit the rotation on uh, along this axis so that it cannot rotate rotate anymore this gives us you know the straight hair or, or else it would just spin and um, lose the direction it's facing and this if you set it up correct um, gives you a nice simulation that you can control in the first frame uh, of your simulation now we need to set this up in our scene which is not easy at all but um, we'll give it a try and hopefully everything works so first thing that we want to do is we need some collider objects um, because the body um, obviously the hair needs to collide with her, with her and I'm wondering see the problem is we cannot really use her current body as a collider because um, the hair is also part of it and we can't have you know the it collide with itself but we can work with a copy maybe I will just start with a copy and move it to a separate layer to the one below and I'll see what I can do for example I'll start start by of course deleting the hair because that's not what we want to collide with and the good thing is when we copy it it should, you know, it keeps the, the, the all the settings, so the rigged part of it is still there. We just need to um, rebind it because we changed the mesh. Um, but more or less, it works. You know what? I want to try it just with this mesh. It might not be the best, but we'll run into the troubles anyways if it doesn't work. So I use this copy of the mesh without the hair, and I select rigid body. I want to have it with mesh colliders and it will be passive and animated and I think we need to check the forming as well because um, our collider will deform during animations like this. So uh, our collider should be set up. Let's just give it a try with a quick object falling down uh, on her hand. It's always fun to test these settings because the like playing around with objects just drop it on here and you see it works pretty well you can change the position and if everything is correct uh, so the collider did not so apparently what happened here so for some reason it did not uh, change the uh, the collider version on the other layer but when I display the layer there is no issue uh, so Hmm, now it appears to work. Alright, anyways, we'll just leave it here. Uh, I think probably it's alright, it was just a matter of what's displayed and not. One important thing that you want to do... Um, well, I'll just name this Collider. And you want to set this not to render, so just uncheck the, the camera object here. This is something I did for the deformer as well, by the way, because it would show up in your render, but you don't want that, so you just uncheck the, the camera icon over here. So on our collider, um, let's see, we can also go ahead and set it to wireframe, just to make sure that we won't... Um, we, we need to tell them apart, right? So this one is going to be our collider. <coughs> and... Um, good so far then let's move on 
So the fir so we have our collider set up. Now the next thing that we should do is maybe maybe let's do um, a chain of of bones. First of all, so I will. Okay, now let's do it, let's do it differently. I will start instead with uh, the objects, and and later on I'll create an armature system that follows this. So here's a new cube, and I want to. This is a very important step. Um, something you should make sure to get right. Uh, every object has, you know, an orientation. And we'll have our bones copy the rotation of these cubes. Now the issue is that bones have a, a certain direction, like the bone is always f uh, along the y-axis. So we know that our object needs to be uh, scaled along the y-axis as well, or rather it needs this. This will be the length of it. So we need to rotate it first, and because our bones are going to um, the chain will be from the top to bottom. I'll rotate it downwards so that Y shows to you downwards. And hopefully this will be everything that we need to do. So from here on I can you know scale it with along these two axes. Um, to give myself the collider that I'm looking for. Something like this. And I probably want to have about a chain of maybe three or two objects here. Um, let's see, one, two, yeah, let's go with three. <clears throat> so about this size will work just fine for us. I will start over here with a, with a mole of it. Um, let's scale it down just a little bit. And when copying it, you can also use Alt D instead of Shift D because as long as you you know keep the mesh inside the same, which it is, we don't we don't want to have you know too many copies of it. So we'll just um, you know have the same data for all of those, or else it would save it. Uh, in a more wasteful manner. Anyway, so this is our first chain. Um, you know, let's set everything up here and let's move it afterwards. I think that's a better idea because uh, as you can see here, what's troubling me a bit in this case is that it's not straight and it's, you know, somewhere in, in, the, in the 3D space and difficult to work with. So I want to start in a controlled environment where I have the grid and everything is straight and later on position it. This will be easier as well um, to, you know, just set everything up. So now that I have these three objects, let me also place our empties right away. Uh, here is one empty, then we'll place another one here and another one here. These will be our joints. Then we need our armature system in there. So let's get started again. Um, I will go into edit mode with our armature system, set the cursor with shift s, set cursor to select it on this one, and then add a new bone, well as I said in the edit mode with the armature system. Um, I can, if you want to see the direction and everything, I'll switch back to this mode. Basically this is what we create here and you want to make sure that everything faces the same direction. And you see, here is our first little problem. Uh, these axes do not line up at the moment. We need to fix that as well. So the way we do it is, actually, I will just spin the bones in this case, because as I said, I prefer to have the x axis as my main rotation axis, which in this case should be this way. Uh, so I just rotated all three of those 
And now everything lines up perfectly. And if I said this bone should copy the rotation of the cube behind it, uh, it would perfectly line up. So that's good for, for now. Now, um, now we need to take a look at the relations of everything. This cube and this empty... Um, actually, no, just this cube will be assigned to this bone. So let's get started. This cube, uh, select the cube first and then select the bone. Control P and then parent, set parent to bone. Uh, do the same thing here, but this time I will also select the... Actually, no, we'll, we'll do it this way. The empty and the cube is parented to the lower bone. Okay, the same thing here. Let's select the, the cube and the empty. And then afterwards the bone, which is kind of hard to select here, um, but in wireframe mode it's easier. And then finally over here. So now when you rotate everything, it should line up. Uh, looks good then. Now to attach it to the head, um, we need to do one more thing. That is that in edit mode, this bone is parented to to the head with keep offset. So when we rotate the head, this strand also rotates. Uh, so that is done as well. But we still ha don't have any physics in there, right? So what we do is we select the first cube and just press rigid body, active, everything is good. For now we'll leave the settings same here and same on the lower one. Um, you can go ahead and switch the collision to box if you want that. I guess because that is a cube object already it works fine. Maybe if it's unstable you want to try others like uh, like what the default settings but it's okay for now. And when you play the animation now, everything everything just drops. Uh, that's because we don't have our constraints set up yet. So select the first empty again. Um, this time you want to uh, select the collider object as our first object, and then our cube as the second one. From then on, it's just you know chaining everything together. Second. Well, like the first cube to the second cube, and this one uh, connects the second cube to the third cube. Now, when you play the animation, everything is stiff. That is, on the one hand, because, um, well, it's straight already, there is nothing to move, but also because we have fixed constraint type. We need to change these to generic. Uh, we don't want any, any um, you know, transition, but we want to limit the rotation along the z-axis. By the way, this is uh, local to the empty object, so you see that our objects themselves have the y-axis showing into this direction, so local to these ones we would want to limit the y-axis, but since our empty is still set up, um, we just set these to zero. Now do the same thing over here, generic, uh, select all of these Select these to zero and the ones down here. One last time, same thing, and zero, zero. Now when we rotate this now and play the animation, we should already have our chain and looks all right. Uh, one thing that we could improve still is that we only have it limited to 45 degrees. I think that something around 70 degrees works better for us. So make sure to have minus 70 on this side and plus 70 on the other side. I'll just copy and paste the seven, minus 70 first, then I'll um, go ahead and do it on the other side with positive. This will give us more, uh, will enable this to, to bend more in both directions. Now we still don't have damping in place, so select again one of the rigid bodies and set both trans translation and rotation to 0 0.9 so that it really is a lot smoother. At this point I also set my frame rate to 60 frames per second um, 
and it will also set the, the time, I mean the speed to 5 so that we really have a smooth fast simulation without any, any issues here. So this is pretty much the setup for the simulation uh, of the bones. So we have everything that we were looking for with the placement and so on. Now we need to copy a couple of versions of this. I would say maybe um, maybe five for the back and two for the front here. And we'll need shorter versions for the front of the hair as well. Um, but I have the feeling that the uh, tutorial is kind of getting long. So I think I will cut it here and continue in the next part because I really don't want to um, give you too much information at once. So as long as you have this set up where you can already rotate it and you can pose it and the simulation will just drop from here, uh, you have already done pretty well because it's not too easy. There are many things to consider and I'm, I'm afraid that some of you will run into issues I hope that you know just research it and hopefully you will find solutions for for that. Um, anyways, in the next part we will continue um, by placing this system uh, uh, with various copies around here, and we'll then also create the weights for the hair so that in the end everything works together, just like in a demonstration that I showed you at the very beginning. Anyways, I hope this video was useful to you. Um, thank you for watching as always, and I'll see you in my next part.